in this here make me tough to you snack cake to me yeah more house more house this been overdue forever forever ask me when it was dropping said never never should have made you cut the feather but i designed it freemason margella what's good he shall try here the most woke no joking on <laughs> I got a game with a brand new video, and I'm gonna keep it up, Bo Bray Biscuit Man. This isn't a video that I originally planned on doing, but a lot of you guys in my comments are asking me my opinion on this guy and what's happening with this dude and what I think the Panthers should or might attempt to do to obtain this guy. And if you've seen the title of the video, which I'm sure you already have if you watch, if you clicked on the video, uh, you guys know I'm talking about George Iloka, the guy out of out of Cincinnati who's been there for what? five, six years now, and the Bengals just cut him out of nowhere very randomly. Was it two days ago? They cut George Iloka, and I read the article. It wasn't that he was doing bad. It wasn't that he got injured. It wasn't that, like, something weird happened. They cut him for just plain, just plain contract reasons. Like, this, just, just wanted to get some money off the cap. In 2016, the Bengals re-signed Iloka to a five-year, $30 million contract, and apparently... His cap hit this upcoming year was going to be somewhere around $5.5 million, which, if you remember, is about how much we actually have to work with uh, with our cap room right now. So that really does fit in pretty well with, you know, what we can do money-wise. So I started looking more into this guy because, look, I'm going to be real with you. Given the choice between watching a Cincinnati Bengals game and being forced to watch the Shark Boy and Lava Girl movie three times in a row, I'm probably going to choose to watch the Shark Boy and Lava Girl movie five times in a row for giving me the opportunity, giving me the chance to not have to watch a Cincinnati Bengals game. And that's how I feel about it. So now that you have a little bit of perspective as to what I feel about the Bengals, you have to understand that even though I started looking for highlight videos of this man, Georgia Iloka, there's not really very many. And that's not to say he's not that good, because look at his stats here. Throw him up for me right here, man. He's been in the league since 2012. Didn't really get that much PT. In 2013, he had 43 tackles, one interception, six passes defended, two forced fumbles, and a fumble recovery. 2014, you see he had 50 tackles. Uh, what was it? Three interceptions and 10 passes defended. Pretty good for a safety. Uh, 2015, he had 35 tackles. One interception, four passes defended. In 2016, he had 48 tackles, seven passes defended, three interceptions. 2017, he had 54 tackles, five passes defended, one interception. And he played in all 16 games except for the 2015 season. And look, he's not bad. But like I said, there's a reason why you don't see very many highlight videos of him. Even if you have these pretty solid statistics for safety in the NFL, if you're a fifth round draft pick safety on a small market team that can't win a playoff game to save their life, even though they're pretty good. I mean, the Bengals aren't bad. They're not bad in the regular season. I mean, Andy Dalton leads them to pretty decent looking records in the regular season in a pretty competitive division. But the only issue is, unless you're a household name and you're not in a, you're not in a big market, and you're not winning at least one playoff game in the last... Look, it, it ain't his fault they're not winning playoff games. I'll tell you that right now. It, it, it's not his fault. We know whose fault it is for the Bengals not winning a playoff game. But we're not talking about that mystery person, Marvin Lewis, right now. What we're talking about is George Iloka. There's not very many uh, highlight videos of this man. But the biggest takeaway I saw from the very limited supply of video of him is that this man can really high point a ball. So it got me thinking, hold up, hold up. How, how big is this man? How tall is this dude? This dude is 6'4". 225. And I had to look at it. I was like, wait, wait, wait. So he's doing some work out here. What are you doing this combine? Now, remember, he came in the league in 2012. So these combine numbers are six years old. He ran a 4.6. Not good. But I mean, for a safety, uh, whatever. He don't really need blazing fast speed. But what really got me was this dude put up 20 on the bench. And if you were around the channel like a couple months ago when I was doing my videos talking about the players we drafted, you know about how I felt about guys coming out of uh, the combine and getting drafted and having certain numbers for their bench press reps. I don't get too much into that. You want to watch those videos? The one will be right here, man. And they'll probably click to the next one. But this man put up 20 reps on the bench as a safety. And his verticals are right, you know, 34.5. Not too bad, but not too impressive either. But what you have to understand here is that don't matter because this, let me give you a little bit of taste of what our starting secondary is looking like. Okay, Dante Jackson, he's 5'11", 181. James Bradbury, he's 6'1", 212. 
Rashawn Golden, 6'1", 201. Mike Adams is 5'11", 205. Denoris Cersei is 5'11", 205. Now, let me just tell you right now, I'm okay with these guys back there. And some of these guys could be big hitters that we don't really know yet. We know maybe, maybe, they're, people, maybe they're holding out on us, but look. There's not a single player in our secondary taller than 6'1 right now. And from what I've seen from George Iloka, he's pretty impressive on jump balls. Now, a lot of the, well, I can't, I'll say a lot, but there's, there's only like, what, like 10 or so highlight plays in that three-minute video that I found. And honestly, I think about two or three, maybe even four of his highlights came up against Julio Jones, which means, one, he's been proven up against elite talent, and two, he's not scared of Julio Jones, who, three, is probably the biggest threat to our secondary for the Panthers since we're in the division. So he's been up against the best in the division, probably the best in the whole league, and he's gotten he's gotten picks, he's gotten passes defended, he's actually ripped the ball out of his hands and stolen the ball. Well, he dropped it, but like he stole the ball from Julio Jones' grasp. You know how strong and big Julio is. So this man coming to the secondary for the Panthers can provide a really huge body that'll make people think, hold up. Now, I know I could maybe beat this guy, beat this corner in coverage, but if they're playing a too high look, and, you know, I see George Iloka out there, he might, if I try to high point it, or even try to lob it out there, he might reach my man. Or, he might square up and get ready for a big hit right off the bat. So, I'm not 100% sure if I should actually, it'll make guys think twice. It might make guys like Drew Brees, Matt Ryan, Jameis Winston, think twice before they throw it deep on us. And right now, that's the exact kind of mindset our defense needs to put these opposing offensive coordinators in, thinking, look, we can't bomb the Panthers. We have to go over the middle. We have to look at the seams. We have to look at, you know, underneath route, maybe even running, because we have a really good, I think we can have a really good handle on the middle of the field with Luke always, you know, roaming around there. And we can probably do well uh, on, on comebacks and whatnot. And the run game, look, the run game going to be handled this year. I think the run game is really going to get handled this year. I'm not worried about that at all. But as long as we make these quarterbacks make reads and make them stay in the pocket, make them look off their first read and the second read is, look, is going deep, they're either, one, going to have to test the middle of the field with Luke and other guys out there roaming, or two, go through all their reads, go through all their progressions, and get hit by our even more improved pass rush we have this year. I think we have a really good pass rush, and if we have one guy out there, another guy out there who's big and is a big hitter who can make quarterbacks just think for extra second, like, man, do I want to put my guy in this kind of position? Do I want this guy to go out in a post and then have to meet my man George Iloka out there in, in, in stride? If I throw this ball, will I get will I get high pointed by a 6'4 DB? Because right now, the the biggest guy being 6'1 and maybe a little bit smallish, at least under 20 pounds of George Iloka, you're not really too, too worried about your receiver, if you have a big guy receiver, getting bodied. But with George Iloka out there, maybe you have a little bit of cause to pause. But with George Iloka out there, you might have a little bit of a cause to pause when you think about putting your receiver in that kind of position. And that's what I think uh, George Iloka can bring to the team for us. But I also want to bring up this next point that... Like I said earlier, we have about five-ish million dollars to uh, to spend, and I think that we really do have an opening on the team for a really good defensive back. But I would be one hundred percent remiss. I would be so so disingenuous if I did not make this point because I want to be consistent, and I've said this on plenty of different videos. But I want to be very consistent here. When I say, and make sure you watch this video above my head right here before I before I even get to this sentence. I want to make sure that I make sure you, if you haven't watched that video, I want you to see that. But there's 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 four words. There's four words I gotta say to you guys right now. And those four words our O-line trash. I don't want to say trash, but look, man, our O-line got some problems, bro. And if we're going to spend $5 million, if we're going to spend any money at all, please find someone on the O-line. I know we want to get our defensive backs straight, man. I want to see how these guys do. We can address the safeties in the draft. But maybe to see how these other safeties who are on the free agent market are looking right now. I say we don't even need to really go for safety right now because, look, there's a lot of dudes in the safety market. The safety market isn't really shifting right now. These guys will still be available after the preseason, so there's really no need to make a big move right now. They're all mid-tier safeties. But if we're going to spend any money, if we're going to spend any money, and I mean any money, 
Can we please protect Cam? I feel like the secondary is a big issue and it's like the, the lesser of two evils where where there's a big evil on this side. It's like a, a final boss right here. And then you have the game developer way up here who's constantly changing code and changing how the game is played. So you really can't even get to the final boss. And that's just the kind of opposition we're working against with our own line right now. It's just like a constantly changing. The game is always changing for us because we don't know who's going to be where, what the actual strengths are going to be in that position. We don't know how they'd be if they were at right tackle or at right guard. But you know, the difference between playing left tackle and right tackle are immense. And I'm sure it's different when you're playing right guard and left guard. There's some of these guys who've been playing every position on the line, and when you become a, a jack of all trades and master of none, you may get exposed by people who are masters at pass rushing inside guys when you're an outside dude playing guard. That's how I feel. Any money getting spent, spend it on the O-line and have our pass rush do the thing on defense, man. But what do y'all think, man? Should we go after Jordan Loca? Should we go after one of these other guys, one of these other safeties who are available right now, man? Do we go after another corner? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. And you already know to do with that like button. Cheers to you. Appreciate the chance. Being told y'all I been the man. Being told y'all I had the gift. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Real ones gonna recommend. Count this as another win.